Airbnb is outlining ambitious plans to use its platform to help refugees and evacuees around the globe on its new Open Homes platform. The goal, to find housing for 100,000 displaced people in the next five years. Earlier, we spoke with Susan Wynn Bailey, an Airbnb host from Denver, who's hosted several refugee families over the last few months. She explained why she decided to sign up for this program. When I first was contacted by Airbnb asking if we could host a refugee in need, um, it was just an unequivocal yes. Uh, it's consistent with our values um, as a family, and quite honestly, it aligns with, I think, the broader vision and mission of Airbnb, which is to serve those in need. And we spoke with Airbnb co-founder Joe Gebbia, who made new announcements about this platform from Paris and how the company is trying to get more people like Susan signed up for the program. Well, you can imagine over the last five years, we've seen incredible growth of our, our host community. And it really begged this question, what if we became proactive about situations in the world rather than just reactive to natural disasters? And so pretty quickly, the topic of displaced people came front and center to us. Currently, there's 65 million displaced people. Uh, that's the most since World War II. It also happens to be close to the population of the United Kingdom. So as we looked at what is Airbnb really good at, short-term hospitality, engendering trust between strangers and global presence, we thought we might extend this natural generosity into a platform that we're calling Open Homes. You call this 21st century philanthropy. Why are you doing this? I feel like we have a responsibility. We have this incredible asset, this amazing community of over 3 million homes in 191 countries. And I think it's, it's really, you know, uh, looking around in the world of, of how we might apply what we're good at with where it's needed the most, this to us makes a lot of sense. You're a $31 billion company. You've got investors who've placed huge, huge bets on your future. How do you sell them on the idea that this is worth devoting time and resources to from a business perspective? Well, you know, I think that this is really just a natural extension of, of what we're already doing. And it, it really is the question of why not provide the same solution we do to travelers as those who are displaced? How does this benefit the business of Airbnb? Does it be benefit the business financially? Well, Airbnb does not take any transactions on these kinds of connections. This is all about generosity and hospitality in times of need. Um, and, you know, I think it's just, it's a part of our business. Certainly, you know, we have a great core business that is able to fund this sort of thing. Um, but to us, this is just an extension of, of the values of our company coming to life in the real world. What happens when there's a problem, for example, when a host and a guest don't get along, or maybe there's a, a cultural clash? Well, we partner very closely with third-party agencies that are well-respected. They've been doing this for many, many years. And we work very closely with them and provide the same customer service that we do when you use a regular product as well. Airbnb was hosting a massive convention for its hosts in November 2015 uh, when the Paris terror attacks happened. You were there. Uh, there is a very divisive debate going on around the world right now uh, around immigration and terrorism. There's talk of closing borders and building walls. How do you respond to that? You know, I think if anything right now, the world could use a little more understanding of each other. And if that's something that we can do through our platform by allowing people to open their homes to those who need it the most, then we're, we're happy to play that part. Tech leaders are making critical decisions right now about how to work with the U.S. presidential administration. Uh, we've seen some tech leaders drop off presidential councils, for example, when they've disagreed with President Trump on climate change. What is Airbnb's strategy when it comes to working or not working with the White House, even on issues you disagree on? Well, you know, we see home sharing as a nonpartisan issue. We work with Democrats and Republicans alike. And so, you know, we'll work with, with any administration, Democrat or Republican, to bring home sharing to life. Airbnb is expanding with this open homes platform. You're also adding more experiences uh, to the platform instead of just places to stay. Give us an update on the business and plans for an IPO. <laughs> well, from a business standpoint, we're really excited because in 2016 we launched Trips, which allows anyone to offer an experience and really answer that question, what can I do? Now that you helped me discover a really local part of a city, how can I find out the cool and interesting things to do and through experiences it allows our hosts uh, on Airbnb 
to share their skills, talents, or passions and allow any outsider to feel like an insider when traveling. Now, Joe, Airbnb has three very involved co-founders, and as the company has grown uh, and moves forward, how do you distinguish your role and what are your top priorities? Well, I think each of us is nicely settled into what our passions are and what's most valuable to the company. Uh, I certainly enjoy thinking about the future, um, and I run a design studio inside the company called Samara, which is an R&D team, and in fact is where the origins of the Open Home platform began. Um, of thinking about how we might utilize Airbnb's core competencies to put a dent in this really global problem. Our conversation there with Airbnb co-founder Joe Gebbia. Interestingly, Gebbia told me there are no regulatory issues around this new effort because no money changes hands. You can check it out at airbnb.com backslash welcome.